In this video, we're going to talk about Canvas apps. We're going to talk about what they are, how you can investigate them for yourself for free, and what Microsoft certifications there are to support you on your journey. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So what are Canvas apps? Well, they are applications that you can interact with. So for example, on the left, I have got in a web browser, a Canvas app, that I can click various buttons, I can look at details, and I can share this throughout my organization. I can also do this using Microsoft Teams. So I can have a personal app, for instance, or I can also use it in Power BI alongside other visualizations. I can also use it on a mobile app, so for your iPhone, iPad, or Android device. So you can see that Microsoft's website, powerapps.microsoft.com, is the place to start, and you can take a guided tour. But let me briefly talk about the pricing. So first of all, there is a developer plan. So if you want to just experiment with Power Apps, then you can do so completely free. It also includes a Dataverse. That is an online database. Once you've decided, that this is for you, you can take it to business pricing if you wish. And you can see that for a user, it costs $20 per user per month. Now, when you consider the functionality you can get, that is actually not a high price. There is a per app plan if all you want is one app, for instance, for a particular user. So either the developer plan or the paid for plan. Either way, you will need what Microsoft consider to be a work email. But there are ways around that. You can sign up for a free Microsoft Office E5 trial, which includes an email address. So what you need to do is sign in or try for free, buy now, or go to the Power Apps developer plan and get started for free. Once you have done this, you'll be taken to the Power Apps portal. Now you can create a new environment. Environments are containers for your apps and databases. So I'll click on the wheel up here, go to Admin Center. On the left hand side, go to Environments, and then I will create a new environment. So this is my YouTube environment. You can say what sort of type it's going to be. So I'm going to change this to a production type. I'm going to create a database for this environment, very important and I will deploy sample apps and data. So having done that, I click save and my environment will then be created. So you can see it is preparing. So I'll just pause the video here. Now you can see that my YouTube environment has been successfully created. So I'm going to close this admin center, refresh my portal, and I'm going to now go to my YouTube environment. Well, it just took a few minutes more, but now you can see YouTube is available. So if your environment is not immediately ready, don't worry, just wait a few minutes, just refresh. So now I'm in my YouTube environment, we have the Dataverse. So this is my online database, which has some standard tables, such as account and contact and other things like this. You can create your own table, but let's use an existing table. Let's use the account table and you'll see at the bottom that we have got some sample data. So what I'm going to do is use that data and create an app. Now I'm going to use a very standard, straightforward way to build the app. I'll go to home and I'll click on Dataverse. So I'll start from a Dataverse table to create a free screen app. So I'll click on Dataverse. I now need to create a connection. And you can see, in addition to connecting to the Dataverse, you can also connect to over 200 different connections, some of which are shown here. So I'll click on Microsoft Dataverse, click Create, and I'll choose a table, click Connect, and now my Power App is being created. So there it is, and I can have a demo of it by pressing the Play button, and I can click on a particular item. I can edit an item. 
So this is now reflected in the data. I can add items and more. Now, in addition to having a default app, I can create my own and I can insert various components into my screen. And this can include artificial intelligence, such as business card reader, receipts, form, object, and text recognizer as well. You can also incorporate Power BI tiles into your Canvas Power app. Additionally, you can modify your existing items. So here we have got our gallery, and at the moment it is showing city, default image, main, phone, and account name. So I can change this so that it's not showing the main phone. Instead, it is showing maybe the country of origin. So here we have the country. So immediately you can see everything changes. You can also change up here things that you're seeing and things that will happen. So if I click on this, it says, okay, I want you to do whatever the parent container does. Well, that is the parent container. So on select, navigate to detail screen. So it's going to another screen. So you can see that there's a fair bit of complexity behind this, but the idea is that this is a no code or low code environment. So we add items into the screens and then we code navigate to this place, change this particular property or send information elsewhere. So this is what a Canvas app allows you to do. It's called a pixel perfect editing environment because maybe I don't want this to be exactly here. I can just change it to where I want it to be. So let's go back to the Power Apps portal and let's go into the Dataverse and into Connections. So we've got a connection to the Microsoft Dataverse, but we can have connections to Twitter and SharePoint and Microsoft Network Weather and Dropbox. So you're not limited to just looking at things that happen to be in your database on a cloud. You can also add additional artificial intelligence into your Canvas apps if you so wish. But there is a free trial available it does cost extra if you do want to use the AI builder. Now we can also incorporate these into your Teams. So imagine you have a Teams channel and you're able to just go to a different post, go to your files, and then go to your app and have a look at a particular table or maybe a particular item. So here we have an account. Well, I'm going to add an expense. So I've previously added an icon here and that allows me to add in new expenses. So I can scan in my receipt, for example, and have that uploaded to the Dataverse as well. You can also have apps on the left-hand side. If I click on the dot, 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 then we can have, for instance, here is a Canvas app that I previously created or you can go into Power Apps itself and start creating a Canvas Power Apps for Microsoft Teams. Additionally, you can go into Power BI and we can insert a Power App here in the Visualizations pane or go to Insert and add it here. So embed a Power App into your reports so that people can use the app without leaving Power BI. So this is a brief overview as to what a Canvas app is. It is an application that you can design on the web using a no-code or low-code environment. You can start from free with a Power Apps developer plan, or you can have a pricing of around $20 per user per month. Now, if you want to find out more about what is available with Canvas apps, then you might want to have a look at the Microsoft certifications. The PL900 certification looks at what. So what is available? And if I click on the study guide and scroll down to Microsoft Power Apps and Canvas Apps, you can see that it would want you to describe different types of data sources and how you can connect to them using connectors, create an app from data, 
use controls to design the user experience, publish and share an app, and describe embedding into Microsoft Teams. So this is really high level stuff that would be great for managers and anyone who just wants an overview as to what Canvas apps can do. If you actually want to create apps, then have a look at the PL100 exam. I would recommend having a look at the PL900 first as this gives you a lot of background. But in the PL100 exam, you would be looking at how to actually create them. So determine when to use forms, galleries, buttons, labels, input controls, images, and custom controls. Implement PowerFX formulas. That's the formula bar right at the top. It's based on Excel, but an extended version. Implement collections and variables so that data can be retained for future use. And you can also run additional things from a Canvas app. So from this exam page, you will see, if I scroll further down, that you can read about Canvas apps. So if your preferred way of learning information is by going through web pages, then you have a fairly lengthy list of pages that you can look at. There are, of course, alternative ways for learning about Canvas apps. Maybe you want to read a book. Maybe you want to watch videos. Lots of different ways are available. So this is Canvas apps. It is an online way to create applications that can then be shared among you and your organization. And you can use them in Microsoft Teams. You can use them in Power BI and much, much more. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then why not like it and then subscribe and click that bell. That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thank you very much for watching and keep learning.